welcome. We begin the day with a convicted criminal who wants to be U.S. president. On Thursday, a New York jury found Donald Trump guilty in what has become known as the hush money trial involving the adult entertainment star Stormy Daniels. A judge will hand down a sentence in July. Now, whether or not Trump goes to prison, that remains to be seen. Prison time would not prevent Trump from keeping his presidential campaign alive. It is possible Trump could win the race for the White House from behind bars. We have this report. The first former U.S. president to ever be convicted of felony charges, welcomed by crowds of supporters. Donald Trump held a press conference at his Manhattan home the morning after a judge announced the guilty verdict. He called the unanimous decision made by a jury of his peers a farce and said that he plans to appeal all of the criminal charges against him. We're going to be appealing this scam. We're going to be appealing it on many different things. He wouldn't allow us to have witnesses. He wouldn't allow us to talk. He wouldn't allow us to do anything. The judge was a tyrant. U.S. President Joe Biden slammed the accusations of an unfair trial. That's how the American system of justice works. And it's reckless, it's dangerous, it's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. That verdict carries up to four years for each of the 34 charges against Donald Trump, though he's unlikely to go to prison. U.S. voters are divided about where they stand on the former president's trial and his 2024 bid for the White House. I was very happy that he was found guilty on all charges. No, I don't think he's guilty. Not at all. I am very pro-Trump. Trump, 24, yes. Yeah, I hope people don't vote for him now that he's obviously guilty, and we all knew he was guilty already, but now it was proven in a court. We don't know at this point. It's, uh, it's going to be a big appeal, so we'll have to wait and see. Even if the appeal fails, he can still run in the November 2024 elections. But what will happen first is a hearing on July 11th, where Donald Trump is set to be sentenced for his crimes. Well, I'm joined now by Jackson James. He's a political insider in both Berlin and Washington. Jackson is with the German Marshall Fund. He's also president emeritus of the American Institute for Contemporary German Studies at Johns Hopkins in Washington. It's good to see you again, Jackson. There's a lot to talk about here. Despite this guilty verdict, Trump can still run for president. What does this tell us about American democracy? Well, on the one hand, I think it might say that the way in which this court was uh, able to be managed and the results seems to suggest that the system worked. Twelve people, this were randomly selected, a, ju a jury of his peers found uh, Donald Trump guilty. Um, and so I think in that way, uh, the system might seem to many, if not all, a confirmation that the system was set up and it worked in this case as well. And right after that, we heard from Republicans. The Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, says that the Supreme Court should step in. So you've got a congressional leader wanting the judicial branch at the federal level to meddle in the judicial system of the state of, of New York. First of all, is that possible? And second, isn't this the behavior that we usually find in an autocracy and not a democracy? Exactly. I mean, I think that, first of all, there's no chance that the Supreme Court is going to take up this case. There's too much time involved. Secondly, there's going to have to be a process ahead of this verdict, which is a sentencing in July. And so in, in any case, uh, this is going to have to take a long walk as we go toward November 5th. There are two or three other trials, which probably won't be handled between now and November 5th, the election, that is. But I think in any case, uh, the way in which some of the Republicans are responding to this is by denigrating the judicial system instead of looking at it as a way to confirm that this system works when it's handled correctly. Mm -hmm. the, the judge, you know, you mentioned the sentencing. The judge um, is not expected to sentence Trump to prison. The, the, I think the maximum penalty would be four years in prison. But they don't expect him to do that because of Donald Trump's age. He'll be 78 when sentencing happens in July. Help us understand this, Jackson. Uh, America's courts 
think that a soon-to-be 78-year-old man is too old to be sent to prison, but he is not too old to be elected to lead the world's sole superpower. Does that make sense? <laughs> not much. <laughs> but I think that the notion is that um, uh, this way in which the trial is probably going to be remembered is completely stamped with one word, and that is unprecedented. We don't know exactly whether there will be uh, an attempt on the part of the district attorney, uh, the prosecutor, to request jail time, but I think it's highly unlikely. And then the question will be, what happens then when the sentences come down, and where does the appeal go? And the appeal may not even make it uh, before uh, the 5th of November. So there's a lot of unpredictable factors and a lot of moving parts at this point after this unprecedented situation. You know, we are told, especially in the United States, you know, you're told that it matters what you do and what you did if you want to be elected to, to public office. Um, and therefore, your past should be as clean as possible, if you will. With Donald Trump, after yesterday's announcement of, of the guilty verdict on his website, which crashed, by the way, he was able to raise more than $30 million. Polls say this may or may not, this verdict may or may not hurt his chances in no November. So this notion that your past performance is, going, is that's what you'll be judged on, does that really hold water in U.S. politics anymore? Well, in this particular case, you know that Mr. Trump has a very strong hold on the followers that have uh, stuck with him, uh, not only in the first four years in, when he was president, but after the four years when he was not in, in, the, uh, in the Oval Office. And so I think that one thing to draw from that, Brent, is that this particular case may not change um, a lot of the electorate in, in, a, in a substantial way. Um, the kind of thinking that I'm hearing here is that this election is going to be decided a number uh, in a number of states, six or seven, uh, across uh, several hundred thousand voters, which are in the moment probably trying to make decisions about how they're going to vote. There is mm -hmm. solidly support for Biden and Trump on both sides of the fence. And so the question is going to be, which two questions. One is, how many people are actually going to turn out to vote? And secondly, how much of this particular case and those that go with it uh, in, the, in, the, in the future are going to have an impact on people's decisions on who they're going to support. And both of those are unpredictable. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting point, too, whether or not this guilty verdict, if it will turn enough voters off, they stay home, and if that will impact the, the outcome of the election. We will find out in November. Jackson James, as always, Jackson, we appreciate your time and your valuable insights. Thank you. Well, my next guest is known for his expertise and insider experience in U.S. politics. David Frum was a speechwriter for the late President George W. Bush, credited with that famous phrase, axis of evil, I should say George W. Bush, not the father. And he is now senior editor at The Atlantic. David, it's good to have you with us. First, I just want to ask you, what do you make of Donald Trump's Thursday conviction? Um... I think uh, I, I've written for The Atlantic about this as well. Um, I would describe this as the right verdict for the wrong crime. Um, in all the uh, um, constitutional crimes, his attack on the January 6th, uh, his attack on Congress on January 6th, his attempt to defraud the election before that, Don Donald Trump will not face justice before the election of 2024. This criminal case pertains to his sleazeball activities as a private citizen, as a candidate for president in 2016. Mm -hmm. This is justice of a pretty inadequate kind compared to the severity of what happened in 2021, but it's the only justice that the American system is going to deliver in mm -hmm. advance of the election of 2020. If, if Trump wins in November, he'll be the first convicted felon to move into the White House. Now, consider that in an ocean away right now, we've got vote counting going on in South Africa. Former South African President Jacob Zuma, he was banned from running in this election because he is also a convicted criminal. What message do you yeah. think these two democracies, what, what does this send to the world about American democracy when you compare these two systems? Well, American democracy is characterized compared to others by a lack of formal law. Um, there, there are just a, 
and I think during the Trump years, people have again and again been surprised by things they thought would be Ill, impossible that are not. We have no rule against a felon running for president or against a felon being elected president. Other countries do because the American system is so old and was written and developed, but with an assumption of some degree of character on the people, uh, on the part of the people who lead it. Um, there's nothing that, for example, forbids a president from operating a business for profit while president. Uh, it's just it was assumed that nobody would ever do such a terrible thing until Donald Trump did it. Would you say that the Constitution needs to, to be rejuvenated, if you will, to bring it in line with standards that, that we see in the South African Constitution? Uh, I wouldn't say that. Um, uh, I don't know that South Africa is any kind of exemplar of anything, but um, I, I think there are a lot of ways of dealing with problems that are subconstitutional. Um, mm -hmm. We may need new law, we especially I think need a new spirit. If Donald Trump is beaten in 2024, mm -hmm. I think that reinvigorates the assumptions that we've always had mm -hmm. that uh, the American system of government will be led, as John Adams said, our second president, in mm -hmm. his famous prayer, White House, let none but wise and honest men ever rule under this roof. Now, we've had presidents before who are not wise. We've had presidents who are not honest. I think yeah. Donald Trump may be our first president who is neither wise nor honest.